The following audio drama is a fan-made version of the classic graphic novel Arkham Asylum A Serious House on Serious Earth. The graphic novel is property of DC Comics written by Grant Morrison and illustrated by Dave McKean. All characters and associated names and references are copyright and trademark of DC Comics and Out of Place does not claim any ownership over it. This audio drama is in no way connected to or endorsed by DC Comics nor it is intended to undermine or compete with any forthcoming material. This audio drama has been produced solely for the personal enjoyment of the Out of Place podcast and their listeners and any of the fans of the Arkham Asylum and DC Comics. But I don't want to go among mad people. Ooh, well you can't help that. We're all mad here. I'm mad, you're mad. How do you know I'm mad? Well you must be, or you wouldn't have come here. The years following my father's death, I think it's true to say that the house became my whole world. Until the night in 91, when I first caught a glimpse of that other world, the world on the dark side. Mother? Mother, it's me. I've brought you something to eat. Please. I... I think you should try to eat some of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Eaten. Mm. Are we in? That was the moment when I first felt truly alone. Many years later, when I became aware of the significance of the beetle as a symbol of rebirth, I realized that she was simply trying to protect herself from something in the only way that made sense to her. But even then, I think I understood that Mother had been born again into that other world. A world of fathomless signs and portents, of magic and terror, and mysterious symbols. Sorry, I'm late, Commissioner. Problems out of town. What's up? There's been a riot at Arkham Asylum. That's what's up. The inmates seized control of the building early this morning. We don't know how it happened. They're holding the asylum staff hostage, making all kinds of crazy demands. We've had to send in furniture store dummies, food, clothing. And? They say there's only one final demand. Thank God. They've been waiting to talk to you, personally. I see. It's the Joker. Joker, are you there? What do you want? Well, hello, big boy. How's it hanging? Don't waste my time, Joker. Just tell me, what is it you want? Oh, I think you can guess. We want you in here with us in the madhouse where you belong. And and what if I say no? Well, we have so many friends in here, sweetheart. Say hello to her! Oh, What's that noise? Can you hear it? That scratching, kind of grinding. What's he doing? She to start work in the kitchens here to earn some extra money. Pearl wants to be an artist, don't you, Pearl, darling? (laughs) She just drew me this beautiful house. She drew it with this pencil. The one I've just sharpened. Open your eyes wide, Pearl. Beautiful blue whoopsie! Jesus, no! (laughs) You have half an hour. And bring a white stick. No. (laughs) No! (laughs) Oh, Jesus, that poor girl. Batman, I... I'm going in there. Jim... Can we talk? You okay? You know, you don't have to go in there. Let me organize a SWAT team or something. No. This is something I do have to do. Listen, I can understand if even you're afraid. I mean, Arkham has a reputation. Afraid? 
Batman's not afraid of anything. It's me. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that the Joker may be right about me. Sometimes I question the rationality of my actions. And I'm afraid that when I walk through those asylum gates, when I walk into Arkham, and those doors close behind me, it'll be just like coming home. I returned to the family home on a cool spring morning in 1920, shortly after Mother's funeral. She opened her own throat with a pearl-handled razor. In the end, perhaps it was for the best. I have to believe that. As the only child, I am to inherit the house and the acre of land upon which it stands. Alone in a gloom that smells of dust and childhood, I dedicate myself to the prevention of such suffering as my poor mother knew, and I begin to make my plans. For the first time in twelve years, I spent the night in my old room. I do not sleep well, my dreams are haunted by beating wings, and outside, far off, a dog barks, on and on through the whole restless night. Next day, I return to Metropolis, where my family and I have been living for some time. I'm working at the state psychiatric hospital, and one of my patients today has been referred to me from Metropolis Penitentiary. His name is Martin Hawkins. Mad Dog Hawkins. I listen as he tells me how he was beaten and sexually abused by his father. I asked him why he chose to destroy only the faces and sexual organs of his victims. It was the Virgin Mary's idea. She says it's the best way to stop the dirty slut spreading their disease. And I ask him why he cuts his arms with a razor. Just to feel. Just to feel something. After two hours he is taken back to the penitentiary to await trial. How many more like him must there be? Men whose only real crime is mental illness. Trapped in the penal system with no hope of treatment. My course is clear. I tell my dear Constance and little Harriet that we will shortly be returning to my family home in Gotham City, there to begin its conversion into a facility for the treatment of the mentally ill. That night I dream I am a child again. Lost in a funhouse, I find myself in the Hall of Mirrors. There are strangers in the mirrors and I freeze, not daring to go any further. Not through that door. At last, my father comes looking for me. I beg him not to take me into the Tunnel of Love. We return by the way we entered. That night, I dream that the mirror people have escaped from the glass and come looking for me. I wake, sweating an adult. And for a moment, just a moment, I feel as though I'm back. Where I belong. Back in the old house. It's salt. Why don't you sprinkle some on me, honey? <laughs> Aren't I good enough to eat? I'm here, Joker. Release the hostages. Uh, you heard them, folks. Hit the road. Bye, Pearl. Let's do it again sometime. But what about her eyes? You said... <laughs> April Fools! <laughs> Oh, cheer up, honey pie. Listen, how many brittle bone babies does it take to... Shut up. Oh, at home with Mr. Tatiawi. Loosen up, tight ass. Take your filthy hands off me. What's the matter? Have I touched a nerve? How's the boy wonder? Started shaving yet? Filthy degenerate. Flattering will get you nowhere. You're in the real world now, and the lunatics have taken over the asylum. <laughs> April Sweet is coming in. Einstein's wrong. I'm the speed of light cracking through the no shivery atoms. No room! Out of the sky whirls and Father. glitters like a melting rainbow. Take it, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Blood and dictator the rats. Oh, 
his best friend now is his time mother. Now it's time to join the club that's made for you and me. I see K E Y. Let the feast of fools begin. Joker, I've had enough of this madness. Enough? Enough madness? How do you measure madness? Not with rods and wheels and clocks, surely? You know, you look pretty when you're mad. <laughs> Kiss me, Charlie! Ravish me! But not with tongues, you hear? Not on our first date. I'm warning you. You're in no position to issue warnings, Charlie. Not with your guilty secret. Now, sit down before I think of something funny to do with you. Who are these people, Joker? You told me you'd release all of the hostages. Well, we insisted on staying, Batman. I'm Ruth Adams. I'm a psychotherapist here. And this is our dear old Doc Cavendish, our current administrator. A man who loves to administer current to his ECT patients. Eh, Charlie? I have a duty to the state. I will not leave this asylum in the hands of, of madmen. Ugh. And while we're discussing duty, it looks like someone did theirs on the floor. Oh, Jesus, Harvey. Is it you again? Are you trying to ruin my heels? I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. It takes so long to decide. So many options. I'm really sorry. I think. Oh, oh, pick me, pick me. Two-Face pissed himself again. Two-Face? Excuse me, Batman, but we'd really prefer it if you call Harvey Dent by his real name. What have you done to him? Done? He's been cured. This place is a hospital, Batman, and we're here to treat people, in case you'd forgotten. As a matter of fact, we've successfully tackled Harvey's obsession with duality. I'm sure you're familiar with his silver dollar, scarred on one side, unmarked on the other. He used to make all of his decisions with it as though it somehow represented contradictory halves of his personality. What we did was wean him off that coin and onto a die that gave him six decision options instead of the former two. He did so well with the die that we've been able to move him onto a pack of tarot cards. That 78 options open to him now, Batman. We plan to introduce him to the I Ching. Soon he will have a completely functional judgment facility that doesn't require so much black and white absolutes. But right now... He can't even make a simple decision, like going to the bathroom, without consulting the cards. Seems to me you've effectively destroyed the man's personality, Doctor. Sometimes we have to pull down in order to rebuild Batman. Psychiatry's like that. You must admit, it's hard to imagine this place being conducive to anyone's mental health. You're gonna hit me with all the local folklore now, right? Secret passages, the ghosts of Mad Amadeus Arkham, the door that's supposed to bleed. Gothic crap. Well, pardon me for saying so, but your techniques don't seem to have had much effect on the Joker. The Joker's a special case. Some of us feel he may be beyond treatment. In fact, we're not even sure if he can be properly defined as insane. His latest claim is that he's possessed by Berengere, the voodoo loa. We're beginning to think it may be a neurological disorder, similar to Tourette syndrome. It's quite possible we may actually be looking at some kind of super sanity here. A brilliant new modification of human perception, more suited to urban life at the end of the 20th century. Tell that to his victims. Unlike you and I, the Joker seems to have no control over the sensory information he's receiving from the outside world. He can only cope with that chaotic barrage of input by going with the flow. That's why some days he's a mischievous clown, others a psychopathic killer. He has no real personality. He creates himself each day. He sees himself as the Lord of Misrule, and the world is the theater of the absurd. We- Card games, Dr. Moon. You know me, I adore card games. Well, I see two angels screwing in the stratosphere, a constellation of black holes, a biological process beyond the conception of man, and a Jewish ventriloquist act locked in the trunk of a red Chevrolet. What about you, Batman? What do you see? Nothing. I don't see anything. Not even the cute young boy in swimming trunks. <laughs> Stop wasting time, you ugly branching bastard. Well, he is ours too, you know. 
Let's see if he don't I mind. say we take off his mask. I want to see his real face. Oh, don't be so predictable, for Christ's sakes. This is his real face. And I want to go much deeper than that. I want to know what it's like to have sticky fingers pick through the dirty corners of your mind. So let's start with the word association test, shall we? Ruthie? I really don't want to do this. Go ahead, Dr. Adams. I'm not afraid. It's just words. That's the spirit, Batman. Sticks and stones. I like a man who can take the pressure. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Just as the archangel subdued the old dragon, so shall I bend this house to my will. I will bring light to those dismal corridors of my childhood. I will open up the locked doors and fill the empty rooms. And set above it all an image of the triumph of reason over the irrational. Harriet is plagued by nightmares. I blame the Lewis Carroll, but you will insist on reading and rereading the books. Perhaps things will settle when the work on the house is finished. Perhaps. One of the workmen must have dropped it. Mother. Ah. Pearl. Handle. Revolver. Gun. Father. Father? And? Death. Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> in the fall of 1920, I am invited to Europe. I finally meet Professor Young in Switzerland. And in England, I am introduced to the so-called wickedest man on the earth, Alistair Crowley. I find him charming and highly educated. We discuss the symbolism of Egyptian tarot and he beats me at chess. Twice. I ran out of French cigarettes in the mid-Atlantic. I arrive home in time for Christmas and find the conversion of a house to be well underway. Constance surprises me with a wonderful addition to my aquarium. Japanese clownfish are a fascinating species. When a dominant female dies, one of the males in her entourage will actually change sex and assume her former role. For some reason, I am reminded of a French name for the victim of an April Fool prank. A poisson d'avril, April Fish. I experience an inexplicable frisson of déjà vu. And then the telephone rings. It transpires that Martin Hawkins has escaped from the penitentiary and the police would like my conserved opinion as to his state of mind. I tell them he may be highly dangerous and I lead them to it. It's not my problem. Not tonight. Is something wrong? No, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Harriet is enchanted by the cuckoo clock I brought her from Switzerland. I pray that it might take her mind from the bad dreams. Then I remind myself that intelligent children suffer bad dreams. And she is so very intelligent and perfectly beautiful. I almost wish she need never grow up. It's getting late. It's time to begin the evening's entertainment, I think. If you're feeling up to it. Up to what? A nice game of hide-and-seek. You have one hour, sweetheart, and there's no way to get out of the building. One hour before all your friends come looking for you. <laughs> there's the Scarecrow and Mr. Clayface and the strange Dr. Destiny. Of course, he seems frail in that wheelchair, but all he has to do is look at you and you stop being real. He does so want to look at you, darling. <laughs> oh, and let's not forget Croc. He came out of his damp dark cellar this morning, dragging his chain behind him. They all want to see you. 
So why don't you just run along now? I don't take orders from you. Well, this guy goes into a hospital, okay? His wife just had a baby, and he can't wait to see them both. So he meets the doctor and says, Oh, Doc, I've been so worried. How are they? And the doctor smiles and says, They're fine, just fine. Your wife delivered a healthy baby boy, and they're both in tip-top form. You're one lucky guy. So the guy rushes into the maternity ward with his flowers. But it's empty. His wife's bed is empty. Doctor, he says, and turns around and waves his arms, and all the nurses wave their arms and scream in his face. <laughs> April Fools! Your wife is dead and your baby's spastic! <laughs> Get it? Oh, what a senseless waste of human life. Now, Batman. Run! The game ends at midnight. Run! <laughs>
Only you can help me. But, man. Don't touch me. I just want to share my disease. Don't. Oh. Don't touch me. No. Wait. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my leg. Oh, my. Clayface? Clayface, where are you? Don't answer then, you dirty, rotting bastard. I don't need you. I can easily find someone else to push me. No! No! My God. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. How I wonder what you're at. I'm so glad you could make it. I have so many things to tell you. You must be feeling quite fragile by now, I expect. The house, it does things to the mind. Now, where was I? Where am I? Where will I be? Ah, yes. The apparent disorder of the universe is simply a higher order, an implicate order beyond our comprehension. That's why children interest me. They're all mad, you see. But in each of them is an implicate adult. Order out of chaos. Or is it the other way around? To know them is to know myself, little girls especially, little blonde girls, little shameless bitches, oh god, god help us all. Sometimes, sometimes I think the asylum is a head, we're inside a huge head that dreams us all into being. Perhaps it's your head, Batman. Arkham is a looking glass, and we... Are you? In spite of everything, the Elizabeth Arkham Asylum for the Criminally Insane opens its doors officially on schedule in November 1921. One of my first patients is Martin Hawkins, Mad Dog. He delights in rebounding to me every detail of the atrocities he inflicted upon Constance and Harriet. He giggles and drools and tells me they begged him to abuse them. He calls my daughter a whore, and I listen. I treat him for six months. I am praised for my courage and compassion. And on April 1st, 1922, one year to the day, I strap him into the electroshock cap. And I burn the filthy bastard. It is treated as an accident. These things happen. There is ozone and the smell of burnt skin in my nostrils, but I feel nothing. I take patrolling the corridors between the hours of 3 and 4 in the morning. I visit the secret room often in order that I might keep my journal up to date. Routine is important, I think. A good routine diverts my mind from morbid imaginings. Sometimes I'm sure I hear hysterical laughter from a cell I know to be empty. <laughs> tape over the mirror in my study, the laughter ceases, and I return to my ritual perambulations. My movements through the house have become as formalized as ballet, and I feel that I have become an essential part of some incomprehensible biological process. The house is an organism, hungry for madness. It is the maze that dreams, and I am lost. Gaze upon the Lord thy God. More, please! Do it again. Zeus Arenotheles, part man, 
Part woman. Electricity inflames my brain. Voltage. Current. The fire of heaven. Look here. I've saved it all. There's power in it, you see. Electricity! Ah, the gift of my body. Divine. Fertile. It shall transform the dry lands of Africa into the perfumed orchards of paradise, and men will worship me anew. For I am Zeus, Lord of ECT. God of Electric Revolution! I give, so that thou shouldst give. Here, my gift to you. Do you want power? I can give you power. Eat, drink. This is my body. This is my blood. The ACDC altar awaits. Let me know you in the form of a shower of sparks. Shocked by my ill health, some friends take me to the opera. Wagner's Parsifal. Don't they understand? Can't they see I'm breaking in a thousand places? Time. Time becomes strange. Forty minutes have passed since I ingested three portions of the Amanita mushroom. So far, no effect. Abruptly, I become convinced that the house is alive and trying to communicate with me. The pressure at the back of my head makes me turn. In the tiny, contained universe, two vast and shimmering clownfish glide toward one another. And make the sign of Pisces. Pisces, the astrological attribution of the moon card in the tarot pack. The symbol of trial and initiation, death and rebirth. I have been shown the path. I must follow where it leads. Like Parsifal, I must confront the unreason that threatens me. I must go alone into the Dark Tower without a backward glance and face the dragon within. I have only one fear. What if I am not strong enough to defeat it? What then? The drug takes hold of me. I feel small and afraid. Perhaps I've done the wrong thing. Somewhere in a far way, the dragon hauls its terrible weight through the corridors of the asylum. I am borne up on a wave of perfect terror. And the world explodes. There is nothing to hold onto. No anchor. Panic string. I flee. I run blindly through the madhouse. Pray for I have no way. Doors open and close, applauding my flight. Keyholes bleed, a choir of sexually made children sings my name over and over again. Arkham, Arkham, Arkham. I'm falling. Oh, mother, what tree is this? What runes are these? I am Atis on the pine, Christ on the cedar, Odin on the world's ash. Hung on the windy tree for nine whole nights, wounded with a spear, dedicated to Odin. Myself to myself, I must see my reflection to prove I still exist. Outside, I hear the dragon coming closer. Closer. Desperately. I peel the tape from the mirror, breaking my fingernails strip by strip. Until I stand revealed in the glass, I stare into old familiar eyes. Mother! I must have fainted then, for it is morning when I next open my eyes, no longer able to tell where the dragon ended. And I begin. Yet I am not the hero, the man of destiny. Have I not confronted the great dragon? Where then is my grail, my treasure hoard? My final reward? Good evening, Batman. 
Dr. Cavendish. Don't come near him, Batman. He cut me. Just stay back. You freed the inmates. You allowed this to happen. Why, Cavendish? Now listen. I only did what had to be done. You read the book on the table beside you and you'll see. Go on. It's Armadeus Arkham's journal. Go on. Read it. I've marked the place for you. Read it. You'll see. And suddenly, the longed for revelation comes in the form of a memory my mind had suppressed. It is 1920. Trees fresh in the dark and over the sky. Rain rattles the windows. Why? Why have I come here? It's here! It's here! Mother, please! There's nothing. And why am I so afraid? Beneath the bed, great wings begin to beat. I'm not mad. See? There? It's come for me! I am not mad. But God help me, I see it. I see the thing that has haunted and tormented my poor mother these long years. I see it, and it is a bat. A bat! Oh, my poor mother. <laughs> It won't take you, I promise. Don't be afraid, mother. I love you. I understand now what my memory tried to keep from me. Madness is born in the blood. It is my birthright, my inheritance, my destiny. I shall contain the presences that roam these rooms and narrow stairways. I shall surround them with bars and walls and electric fences and pray they never break free. I am the dragon's bride, the son of the widow. Leather wings enfold me. You see now? You understand? You who've kept this place supplied with poor mad souls for years. You who fed this hungry house. Do you see? You are the bat! No. I... I'm just a man. I'm not fooled by that cheap disguise. I know what you are. Arkham tried to kill his stockbroker in 1929. That's what they finally locked him away for. Did you know that? He didn't stop. He read the Golden Bull. He'd study shamanistic practices and he knew that only ritual, only magic could contain the bat. So do you know what he did? He scratched the binding spell into the floor of his cell. He used his fingernails. Can you imagine that? His fingernails! It took years. Oh, say can you see By the dawn's early light I see now the virtue in madness. For this country knows no law nor any boundary. I pity the poor shades confined to the Euclidean prison that is sanity. All things are possible here, and I am what madness has made me. Whole. And complete. And free at last. Finished. Get someone up here, quickly! It's finished. <gasps> His hands! Who is this man, Doctor? I'm Arkham. I am home where I belong. He gave everything. Everything. But still, it wasn't enough. Two years ago, I found this hidden room. Read the journal then, too. I just couldn't stop thinking about what Arkham had said, and I realized that it was my destiny to finish what he started. I set the trap for the bat, you see. I surrounded the asylum with a circle of salt, so it couldn't escape again. And now, well... Dr. Cavendish! Charles! Shut up, you ignorant cow! Cavendish, you're sick. You need help. I'm sick? Have you looked in the mirror lately? Have you? Cavendish, no. Jesus! Mommy's... <laughs> Mommy's boy! No. Mommy's boy. Mommy's boy. Help me. For 
God's sake, do something! No! Mommy! No! Oh God. Oh my God. Oh God, his throat. He got what he deserved. Come on. I didn't mean to. I really didn't. I take it this passage is the way out. Y yes, yes it must be. I think it's this way. This way out. I know. Do you still have Two Faces coin? Yes, I... Oh, Christ. I just killed someone. Just give me the coin. You're going back in, aren't you? You're going to undo all of my work. What are you? Stronger than them. Stronger than this place. I have to show them. That's insane. Exactly. Arkham was right. Sometimes, it's only madness that makes us what we are. Or destiny, perhaps. The bat! It's the bat! The bat's destroying everything! You should have never allowed him in here, Joker. He's too dangerous. That's right, blame me. Go on. You're free. You're all free. Oh, we knew that already. But what about you? Have you come to claim your kingly robes? Or do you just want us to put you out of your misery like the poor, miserable, sick creature that you are? <laughs> Why don't we let Two-Face decide what to do with me? Me? No. I can't. Really. I... I... Harvey? Brilliant? <laughs> if the unmarked face comes up, he goes free. If it's the scarred face, he dies here, okay? He goes free. Parting is such sweet sorrow, dearest. Still, you can't say we didn't show you a good time. <laughs> Enjoy yourself out there. In the asylum. Just don't forget, if it ever gets too tough, there's always a place in here for you. Who cares for you? You're nothing but a pack of cards.